And this is East Carolina stockyards where they buy and sell livestock. And you see they're having a little outdoor yard sale. It's a little chilly for that. This is Pastor Wingard's burial plot, but neither one of them have passed yet. You see, he was born in 40, she's born in 42. Their baby is buried in Aden. So friends, I'm in Grifton, North Carolina, and this is the place, I'm almost 100% sure this is where it'll happen at. Colin Baldry would ask me, and uh, Bear Baldry, they would ask me to come work in a concession stand here for an event that was related to the Shad Festival, which is, uh, Shad is a fish, and they have the Shad Festival here in Grifton. And whenever I would work in this thing, we made hamburgers and hot dogs, and I could eat as many hamburgers and hot dogs as I want, and I hate, I'm ashamed to tell it, but I think my record was 26 hamburgers in one day, and I think I ate over 20 hot dogs in one day, two separate days. But I worked in this for two different years that I can think of, and I believe that it happened right here. I think it was, there was a concession stand. I remember that building, and the concession stand was kind of over there in the middle from my recollection. But I would have been in the ninth grade, so that's late 70s, early 80s, uh, or 1980, so that would have been a while ago. River Road, North Highland. So Colin, I wanted to ask you about, you invited me to work with you, to my re recollection, two different years in Grifton in a, um, a concession trailer. Yes, the Kiwanis, and it was Okay, at, at, so I couldn't remember what it was. Yes, it was the Kiwanis Horse and Pony Show uh, so May what? May 27th at 10 Grifton Stables, Grifton. Okay, so that's when you go into Grifton. That's that white mm -hmm. building on the right. I thought mm -hmm. that was the building. I and filmed we were, there just a little while ago. I said, I recognize this building. We ran that thing of hot dogs and hamburgers. And Do you uh, remember how many hot dogs and hamburgers I ate? No, but... <laughs> it was a lot. I, I remember they, the little one kept calling them Colin Ball Ridge <laughs> over the uh, intercom. Where they were announcing the horse races. Yes, I remember that very well. It happened May 27th at 10 Grifton Stables in Grifton, because I did the commercial for Channel 9. So we did two years, though. I think I worked with you yeah. twice, two and different eighth, years. Yeah, it's the eighth grade, ninth grade, because you moved to Kinston in the 10th grade. Yes, I did, and I wouldn't have been there in the eighth grade. I would have been, well, you know what? You're right, eighth grade and ninth grade. I'd have been at, at Aiden Middle in the eighth, mm -hmm. and then the ninth at Aiden Grifton. You're exactly right. Man, he's got a memory. Wow, he's got a memory. Yeah. But I had completely forgotten about that, and I was we driving... We home one day from school, Billy. Do you remember that? From yeah, there. from Aiden Grifton. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see. We painted the fence, and it was a Kiwanis Horse and Pony Show, Coastal Plain Circuit, Sunday, May 27th at 10, Grifton Stables, Grifton. Uh, let's see. And it was Kiwanis and... And see, I, would, I didn't know if it was related to the Shad Festival. I couldn't no. remember, but I didn't think so. It was a Kiwanis it, fundraiser. It was in May because it was school was let out. The school was already out. And, uh, and so that was the beginning of the summer. Is that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I did the commercial and at Channel 9, and they screwed it up for some reason or another. They Don't put that on there. Oh, so it's already on there. <laughs> but they, they, when they were putting the commercial together with the voice of a cartridge, at Channel 9, they messed it up and it got all... So you did some of that kind of stuff. You did voiceover and you did work like that. Tell us about that. Well, uh, from 81 to 88, that was my granddad got married. It was in 88. And uh, I helped out at Channel 9 under the direction of Mr. John Spence. Uh... Now, he was a news guy, right? He I remember the director. name. He farm he director. Farm, farm director. Farm okay, I remember that. I remember the name. Okay. And uh, from 81 to 88, I went in and put music on the carts for Carolina Today between the commercials. Which was the Slim Short Show. Yes. Carolina Today, yeah. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Edsel Gordon, Hal Moore, uh, Derwood Harris... And Slim Short, they had an anniversary on uh, October 26, 1979. And uh, let's see. Uh, 
What else you want to know? <laughs> you probably told him enough right now. You, you, got, you, you gave it. That's great. And I remember you working there and doing that because, man, you were all about doing the audio and the Mr. tape. Churchill and told us. Told all of that kind of well. stuff. Yeah. And he's dead now. And so is uh, a boy that. All those guys you were working with are dead. Uh, this, uh, you remember a boy named David Babcock? Yeah, I remember David. Yeah. He just died recently. Yeah. And he had a sister. Sharon. Sharon, yeah. And a brother named. Jeffrey. Jeffrey. I, I, what I happened to David? Stroke, I mean, massive wow. stroke. That was just last two weeks ago. Yeah, I remember David very well. Because he was our age, right? No, well, I had to repeat first grade. He was my age. Yeah. See, I'm older than you are. Are you? Yeah. I'm 54. I'm 55. Okay, I'll be 55 in March. Uh, David had a fabrication shop right out on, on the on Highway 11, before, bypassing Grifton, where you cross the creek. He had a have fabrication business there. He did metal work. Yeah, that was kind of his yeah. his thing. Yeah. Yeah, I remember them very well. So this is Grifton, North Carolina. This is what I would call downtown. And this place flooded really, really, really bad at one time. Not too long ago, not too many years ago, and I think it was really a disaster here. And I'm not sure what part of town it all got in, but I do know that it got in parts of town. It looks like they may be going to have the Christmas parade today. Yep, that looks like a, a Christmas parade float. So they may be planning on having the Christmas parade on today. And this is on the Noose River, I believe, this little town. And the Noose River, after the hurricanes, would overflow and just destroy things. And I'll see if I can find some information about what happened here. But I went to Aiden Grifton High School, so a lot of my friends in high school in the ninth grade lived in Grifton. In fact, I had a really good friend, uh, David Lyles and Chris um, Linville, that I played in a band with that lived here in Grifton. And I was trying to remember how to get to their house, but you know, I don't know how to do it. And I think I played in a band, that would have been after Lori and I got married, but maybe, nah, I think that would be before Lori and I got married. Uh, David went on to be very successful in the audio engineering business. He works out of New York City and goes around and does uh, pro audio for a lot of different people, uh, a lot of different touring bands. He tours Europe and all over the U.S. with <clears throat> a lot of really big bands and uh, very proud of him. He always reminded me of Daryl Hall from Hall & Oates. He had that big hair, and he was a drummer, really good drummer. I, and one thing I would say about David is his parents were very supportive uh, of him being a musician. In fact, I know that it just hit me. I know that I played in the band with them before I got married because they attended my wedding. It just hit me, him and Chris. I haven't seen Chris. I don't even know how. I've tried to figure out how to get up with Chris Linville unsuccessfully, but I have stayed in touch with David uh, on a s small scale. I mean, we're not hanging out, but you know, you just reach out to someone and say hello. And I have done that with David. And this is the little town of Grifton. And I was trying to remember where David lived, but you know what? I don't. This is the family town, Grifton. So I found an address. We're gonna go see if this is the address of the house. I remember the house being really, really long. And so hopefully it will stick out to me that this is the home. But I always thought that David, his son and Chris Limbill were so cool. And I played bass in the band. David played drums and Chris played guitar. And we played out a little bit. 
I would imagine, I know David turned out to be a pro audio guy and I'm sure he played music in a professional manner too. He was a really good player. But I would imagine that Chris uh, went on to play as well. But one thing that I recall about Chris is his mom and dad smoked marijuana and he and they allowed him to smoke marijuana. I never did, but I do recall that being a thing. The house is gonna be here on the left hand side. 6892. No, that's not it. Yeah, this house was much larger than these houses. Is it 573 or 587? That may have been the house right there. That's 573. Nah. Nah. So friends, this is 6721 Church at the corner of Village and Church Drive. This is where I played in the band and practiced in that garage right there with David Lyles and Chris Linville. That was their house. So when the floods come after the hurricane, this is the area, I think this is the Tar River. And this is where they, I think they fish for the shad. I'm not a big fisherman, but I think they shad fish here. And you can see how low the water is, but it flooded that town down there. I remember it devastated it. Just a big mess is what it was. So we'll go right into town and I'll see if I can find some photos of the flood. We'll see what this says. Cameron Bridge dedicated to the memory of John Can Cameron, Commissioner 2nd District by the State Highway Commission of North Carolina, 1919 to 1926. So that right there is the edge of that bridge right there. The water had raised up that much. So this is the Noose River. I thought it was, but there was no signs. But that is no doubt the Noose River. And this is Grifton right down here. We just crossed from the Lenore County to the Pitt County line. And we're gonna scoot down here and see if we can find any of the stuff that was flooded. I think you felt us go down a hill just then from the bridge. So I believe that most of these buildings, now they were not submerged in water, but they had water in them. That Dollar General has been built up on a, uh, on a bank to keep it. This building right here, I want to show you in just a moment, was underwater. See the orange awning? I'm going to show you right here. So you see that says Highway 55. That building is that building right there. And look, that looks like the Dollar General and it's still, unless it's been torn down and rebuilt, it looks like it may have gotten water too. So where I'm sitting right now, there's the Dollar General building right over there that you saw in that photo. Where I'm sitting right now, I believe was definitely underwater. Check that out. So in that video or that photo, you can see this building and you can see part of that building. So from this area that we're in right now was definitely, water would have been over my doors where I'm at right here. In fact, it may have been over the top of the car. Highly possible. And then you can see that it goes back uphill right here. So that's the reason these houses are built up so high to try to keep it above the flooding. Uh, 
Dog wearing a coat. So they're saying here in Grifton, with the Grifton Shad Festival, and that's one of their signs right over there. Check this out. See the fish right there. Their saying is, eat mo shad. And I'll show you right over here. Saw the sign as I pulled up. Eat Mo Shad, Grifton, North Carolina, and you can see that outline of fish. Now, I'm not a big fish eater. Uh, I'm not even a little fish eater. But at least they've marketed it pretty cool or pretty well. This is North Carolina. And I'm a, I don't know if the Christmas parade is today. The Christmas parade may be tomorrow. And you can see even on their police department that they have the shad. It says since 1883. It's been around a long time. Nice, quiet little North Carolina town. Very much like a lot of North Carolina towns. And this is Queen Street, by the way. A lot of these towns, the main thoroughfare is called Queen Street. I want to see what it would look like if I were officiating the parade. Let's see. It'd be right here. Eat Moshe. Eat Mo Shad. <laughs> yep. Merry Christmas, y'all. Merry Christmas. Grifton, North Carolina, the early home of the Tuscarora and site of the Indian village Katechna. Katechna. Grifton has also been known as Peter's Ferry, Blunt's Ford, and Bell's Ferry. The town was first incorporated under the name Bell's Ferry on February the 28th, 1983, or 1883. On March 9th, 1889, the General Assembly changed the name to Grifton, derived from the name of CMA Grifton, a local planner. This was put up January 1985. Pretty cool history, friends. This was a big Indian town. If you walk around here in this part of North Carolina, go out in a freshly plowed field, a lot of times you can find a Civil War bullet, button, or an Indian arrowhead. Many times you can just walk out in the field and find one. It's an interesting place. I don't think I enjoyed it as much as I should have when I lived here, especially the historic aspect of this part of North Carolina. I didn't live here in Grifton, but I lived in a lot of places. So let's, let's go see something else. Stay tuned. During my time of growing up, this giant TV antenna that you see out here was always a thing that, that intrigued me. That thing is giant. Look at it. And we would come out here. I remember coming out here with David and Chris Linville. They had a scary house out here. I have no idea where, but I remember it was close to this tower. But when I say this tower is giant, I mean it is giant. It is way on up there. 
I'll try to get closer. Let's take a look, see. That bad boy is giant. I don't know how tall that is. I would say a thousand feet. But it was an, always an intriguing thing to me because it was just so big. This is part of Channel 9. We'll get out and look for a second. Those cables are so large that they even have outriggers to keep the cables from vibrating. Look at these things. But when I say that bad boy's tall, it is on up there. Let me get in the shade here. It is way up there. And I can see those cables vibrating a little bit. But can you imagine climbing that thing and going to the top to fix a light bulb? If that thing fell, I'm far enough away from it that it would still hit me. If it fell this way, wow, it's way out there. This is a really North Carolina thing. If I don't the sun and I'm out there mowing the grass or blowing the leaves. I did that with my dad. And I did that with my kids as well. So make sure when you're watching the Weekly Spa Guy, you subscribe, you give me a big thumbs up if you like the video, and watch the Weekly Spa Guy, friends. Thank you.